those couple thousand dollars a week, whenever you're shut down, can mean the difference between keeping the lights on and keeping the doors open. I am Daniela Squickero with the Hilton Head Life and the Beaufort Life Charter One Realty, and this is Remain Calm. We are already on session eight, guys, which is completely crazy. And today I have two guests, and we are going to be talking about the Hungry Hearts Restaurant Relief re Restaurant Worker Relief Fund. Got it, right? Yes. That's a mouthful. It's a, okay, tongue, it's so a tongue twister. <laughs> we're gonna call it Hungry Hearts for the for the yep. future for the show. <laughs> but we have today Leah McCarthy, who is a Bluffton staple. We all know her and love her. And we have Mark Nixon, who is in his own way also a Bluffton staple, certainly. And he just so happens to be the newest member of my team. But that is not what we are here to talk about today. That will be in another episode. Today we are talking about Hungry Hearts, what it is, what it means and what it's doing for our community. So Leah, we'll start with you and then uh, Mark will just go right to you after because I'm gonna ask you both the same question. Um, first, actually Leah, first of all, what is it? And then kind of go into why you got involved. Yeah, of course. So the Hungry Heart Restaurant Worker Relief Fund is a program that my husband and I started. I think March 20th is when we came up with the idea for this mm -hmm. because there were a couple days where we were trying to troubleshoot our own business. We own the Downtown Deli in Bluffton and downtown catering company. And we knew that our own workers were gonna be affected and workers all over um, Beaufort County in terms of the restaurant and hospitality crew. That really is a lifeblood, um, major lifeblood of our, of our industry and our area. And with them losing their jobs and not only losing their jobs, even if they were still working, a lot of the uh, workers are tipped employees, so they were going to see a huge reduction in their tip income. And we know that they work sometimes, you know, pay bills and, and get their income and live shift to shift. So what we wanted to do was to be able to provide some sort of a relief for them mm -hmm. and not only for the worker, but for the restaurants as well. So we came up with this kind of twofold foundation. Okay, so you started it. Now, Mark, how did you learn about it and why did you get involved? What's your background? Uh, my background and Bluffton, um, I have been in the restaurant business for my whole life. Um, moved to Bluffton to continue working there and to live in a little bit of a better community. Uh, Bluffton and Hilton Head are amazing. Um, I found out about it because whenever the pandemic hit, Surge had to close its doors for, um, for actual sit down, dine in seating and we all wanted to go. A lot of us lost our, our full-time jobs. I work at the dockside um, as well as with you, Daniela. Um, and they posted a lot of ways that we that they could help. And this is one of the posts. Surge actually has given back to the program. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure of the exactly how much, but I know it's been a lot of money that they put in. Mm -hmm. uh, and they push trying to help us as much as they possibly can, mm -hmm. making sure that nobody's going hungry. Um, and it's been really awesome that they were able to do that. I got involved because I went to pick up my coupon book and I saw Leah and I bumped into one of our local bartenders, Paul. They were having a great time making a video and I was like, you know what? I really want to be involved. I want to help. I want to get back to the community and, and do as much as I possibly can to help and maybe take a little bit off of her plate because the woman goes nonstop every day. And it's it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, Leah and I share that, and I've known her long enough to know that that is absolutely an accurate assessment, <laughs> and we're all so glad for it. But so let's talk a little bit about um, how it works. So you you get there, and first of all, where is there? That's number yeah. one. And then number two is, what does it look like on, on the inside? I mean, from the volunteer's perspective, and then if you're somebody who needs this service, how does it work? Yeah, so perfect. So um, twice a week so every wednesday and every saturday from 2 to 4 p.m we have three locations that the restaurant worker can go to and i say restaurant but i mean hospitality so even if you worked for um like the weston or palmetto bluff any of the larger resorts you can definitely and want you to participate in this so 
Um, you go to any of our three locations on Wednesdays and Saturdays from 2 to 4. And those locations are Downtown Deli in Bluffton. We have Alfred's on Hilton Head Island and Fat Patties in Beaufort. You come into us. We greet you with a very big welcoming food and beverage hospitality smile. We make you feel comfortable because that's one of the biggest things we want is for our workers to feel comfortable in this and and yeah. welcome yeah. um so you come with a paycheck stub or even your unemployment letter or you know if you have a letter that you were laid off anything that shows where you worked and that confirming that you are in fact a restaurant or hospitality worker and you get a coupon book that has seven vouchers or tickets in there and those tickets are what you use to quote pay for your meals at the restaurants now, you're not paying for them. The foundation is paying for them, but you're redeeming them um, at any of the restaurants that are currently listed on our schedule. You can find that schedule on our Facebook page um, or on our Instagram page. So Hungry Heart Relief Program is, is what it's under. And um, so we have over 40 participating restaurants right now in Hilton Head, Bluffton, and in Beaufort combined. Some serve only, let's say, one shift for dinner. Some serve the entire seven days a week that they're open for lunch and dinner. So these workers have options to go to, and we want them to have options. And based on where they're located, they can go in wherever you know they're wishing for. If it's we have um, Mexican and One Hot Mama's barbecue and lunch at the deli, um, burgers. We have a whole variety of places that that they can go to mm -hmm. and get a free meal. That's fantastic. Okay, great. So uh, you mentioned a couple of places that we can go and get that information if this is something that, uh, you know, some of our viewers would like to participate in. Do you need more volunteers or are you maxed out at this point? Um, I think we can always use a set of hands. I'm kind of the person that if you want to help, I'll find a job for you. Mm -hmm. You know, poor Mark's like, I want to help. I was like, perfect. You're our new volunteer coordinator. <laughs> So that's Famous something about, words. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. So don't, don't say you want to help if you don't really mean it. When you ask me that <laughs> Fair question. enough. Yeah. Um, so we can always use a set of hands. And what we're doing is we're positioning people at these locations to help distribute the tickets. That's mm -hmm. one job. Mm -hmm. We're also um, needing those tickets to get collected from all of these restaurants on a weekly basis. So that's another job. So if you're even watching us from Beaufort, we can really use some hands over there. Um, it's great to just get a little bit of interaction, get out of your house, you know, and, and come, you'll have to glove up and mask up and stay socially distant. Um, we're really strict with that when people are, um, you know, getting their tickets, but it's a great way to kind of just get some fresh air. So yeah, if you want to volunteer, you can private message us or DM us through either of those, um, social media channels. I think that's a really important point that you just brought up too, because that's something that I can imagine coming, sort of going through this process and then coming back, even out on the other side, people are going to be really concerned about proximities to other individuals and especially, you know, food handling, things like that. So you said you're being really strict on that front. So people really shouldn't worry at all coming in. Yeah, no, not at all, because um, as, as Mark can attest to this, um, we had our measuring tape out we were putting marks where people stand and wait in line mm -hmm. we direct them so if they on saturday we did this outside just because it was a beautiful day mm -hmm. but typically if we're inside we have someone positioned at the door and we only let in two people per time to come in and redeem the tickets and wear gloves and we wear masks and so we're being very very one door one that. door out yep okay like a big circle it's yeah we keep everybody nice and distant you mentioned tickets a few times what is, uh, what's the reasoning behind that? Um, were you doing that from the beginning? And is that also helping you to track how many people you're able to serve? Yeah, so we were not doing it from the beginning. In the beginning, it really, I, I was a, a party of one. And so I was really just wanting to get people fed. So I was pushing, you know, getting donations, trying, trying to get people in and out as quickly and as easily as possible. Mm -hmm. And we don't want people to think that we went to this system because people were taking advantage of it because truthfully, we really didn't see that. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why we do it is yes, some accountability, but also we do like to keep track of, of where they're coming from in terms of what restaurant group that they worked at mm -hmm. um, just for statistics. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is for us to be able to continue to get funding. Because in order to get grants, um, any grants through COVID-19, we have to make sure that they know that we are taking care of the funds that we're receiving, that we're being very conscious about um, how it's distributed. 
And through Low Country Strong Foundation, that is our partner 5013C Foundation. They are um, through the Community Foundation of the Low Country. So all of the funds that are collected go through Low Country Strong, mm -hmm. and then they're distributed from Low Country Strong. So there's almost three eyes on everything that's happening. So we're very conscious of, of the money that we're getting and making sure that it's getting collected and distributed properly. And then we have gotten some large grants. So like Mark said, we did get a $5,000 check from Surge Group, which we're so appreciative of. Mm -hmm. But you know, in order for a company like Surge or any of the larger corporations that we've gotten funds from, they feel confident that they can, you know, get that tax deduction. Right. It's a good thing, right? It's a benefit for everyone that gets involved in it, however they do, because it's an opportunity not only to help the community, but you also don't end up necessarily hemorrhaging money as a result of, of wanting to help. You're able to actually have some sort of stability that comes from this. So you mentioned funding. So the restaurants that are participating, when do they or do they get any sort of compensation, even just to cover materials or anything like that? Or is it purely donations? How does that work? Yeah, so th I'm so glad you asked that because this is something we really want to make sure that not only the workers know, but that the community knows. Um, they're not only helping the worker, but they are helping the restaurants. So when the restaurants um, serve these meals, they keep a tab, just like ringing up any, any paid person that comes in. They keep that tab and they send us an invoice for those meals. Mm -hmm. They can invoice us anywhere from, you know, $1 up to $12 per meal is what we allow them. Okay. We have seen probably on average around $8 is what most restaurants are billing mm -hmm. that covers their cost and their labor. It keeps, you know, their doors open and their lights on and it gives the workers, you know, things to do. They really appreciate it. Um, they're not making a ton of money off of it, if you can imagine, but it's given them a little bit of cash flow and we encourage them to do that because we want to give back to them just as much as they're giving back to the worker. I will say also we've had several restaurants who have received a check and then donated directly right back to the fund because they had a good week and they felt right. very giving and they want to help But right now, you know, hospitality people are just giving by nature. You know, we want to be able to do more, but we understand that now is not the best time for them. So it's giving them an opportunity to give a little bit and take a little bit at the same time. So they, when, when you donate, you know, you're paying for those meals for the workers. You're giving not only food for them, mm -hmm. but you are supporting our local restaurants. And that's so crucial right now to keep them open. Cause when we reopen this country, we want to be able to have those bars and restaurants gearing, gearing up and ready to go. Absolutely. It's the first place most of us are going, right? So that's going to be a very important thing to get them rocking and rolling right away. And you can certainly understand that. How long do you anticipate having to have this, this, this program in motion? Do you have any sort of idea, any vision of a light at the end of the tunnel or how long that tunnel might be? You know, I wish I had a crystal ball to know how, how long we can go. But Don't based on based on budget numbers right now, we can sustain this for about six more weeks. Okay. That's where we're at. I would say that we spend anywhere from about 16 to $18,000 a week back to the restaurants. We have about 250 to 270 people um, going into those restaurants every single week and redeeming tickets. So we're serving about like 2000 ish meals. Um, so, you know, in order to sustain that, we have raised just shy over $100,000 in both private, mostly private donations. Mm -hmm. um, we have gotten, like I said, a grant from Surge. We got a $20,000 grant through the COVID-19 fund that the Coastal Foundation of the Low Country um, raised and they're mm -hmm. given back to mm -hmm. us. So there's some big, you know, dollars and grant money that we're also waiting on so that hopefully we can sustain this a little bit longer because you know even if we do open back up next week or even the week after mm -hmm. the fallout from this is going to take some time so if we Absolutely. can still give the restaurant worker a little bit of a break mm -hmm. and you know seven less meals that they have to worry about in a week it will help put more money into their pockets so they can you know continue you know working and, and paying their own bills you know, I, I read something recently um, that said that our economy, this is not like a trickle down, this is a trickle up. Mm -hmm. Because restaurant and hospitality workers make up over 50% of our gross domestic product right now. 
in our country. And so if we're not making money, we can't spend money. So we can't. Right. So it, this is a this is a major crisis. Restaurants and restaurant workers need to get back to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark, let me ask you from the perspective of uh, a volunteer on the one hand, but also <laughs> Somebody, I mean, thinking back to how you actually got involved in this, you were somebody who was there to take advantage of it, right? So for you, what do you see as the value to that community um, of this program and, and what kind of a difference is this making? I think for me, it was it's nice to know that there's a place that we can go, um, even if it's just for a treat meal, like something that is something that I would normally cook myself, just something to get out, mm -hmm. um, something to go feel normal. Mm -hmm. um, another really big one is, and it's funny because when I first got started, I didn't realize that the restaurants actually got paid for this. Being in management for so long and helping people run their business, those couple thousand dollars a week, whenever you're shut down, can mean the difference between keeping the lights on and keeping the doors open. Mm -hmm. Like Leah said, it, it means that some of those places that weren't having any income at all have the opportunity and the chance to actually be open when we're done with this. And it gives us a place to go back and, and it really gives back to the community. Mm -hmm. I think my biggest takeaway is it doesn't just help the workers. It really is helping out the restaurants as well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these places are owned by local people that love the community just as much as we do. And for us to be able to give back to them and to help them, and it makes me feel really special. Mm -hmm. Leah, what what has been your experience uh, throughout all of this, being the person who, who with your husband, developed this and, and started to run it really from the ground up? What has been your experience in terms of talking to people, the work that you're doing and, and the value it's brought to the community from your perspective? You know, it's really, I can get really emotional about it because um, a couple times during the ticket distribution over the first week, especially, you know, I had to, I had to walk away and go into the bathroom and kind of like recompose myself because the impact of just one meal, especially when you see single moms come in with their kids and the relief that they have. And, you know, it's the, the comfortability that they get from this program to, like Mark said, you know, to feel normal, to feel like it's okay to use these tickets, that they're mm -hmm. not, you know, down on their luck. It's just giving them a little kind of extra special gift. Mm -hmm. And the thank yous and the messages we get, I mean, uh, on a daily basis is just more than I could have ever imagined to come from this. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really heartwarming. And not only that, truly, you know, Surge Group is one of my biggest competitors. A lot of these places are my competitor. And we are like, we don't even think about that. Mm -hmm. We're like all good friends now. We text, we talk, we have just a whole different respect for one another. Um, in, in fact, Surge Group said there were a couple of people who just really loved being able to help each other because they're all in their own restaurants. And a lot of times they, they're just grinding it out in their own places. They don't even get to go and you know see other people that are working in the other group restaurant so that's another part of the feedback that we get is like you know you you're really bringing us together it's nice to be able to have that common bond with one another you know mm -hmm. that we truly are all in this together i mean it sounds so cliche but it is it it just it's, that's the truth behind it you know i've got to meet mark i've gotten to meet so many great people um and just the generosity from people and the kindness and the willingness to help. I mean, I went from, like I said, just my husband and I to Mark and a couple other volunteers. Ashley Rhodes is an event planner over in Beaufort. She has been so crucial behind this entire project. She's done our scheduling. She's done all of our social media marketing. Mm -hmm. Jeff and Kim Block and jo Josh Simpson, who are the founders of Low Country Strong Foundation the most giving people that I've ever met. I mean, you know, they have their own businesses to run that they're doing and they are spending hours with me on a daily basis. And I don't want to forget to mention Nick with um, Fat Patties. He mm -hmm. has been my Buford connection. Great guy. Mm -hmm. um, again, just willing to, with a family and two restaurants of his own, willing to just roll his sleeves up. And, you know, we text all mm -hmm. hours of the night just mm -hmm. to get the job done. I just went to Fat Patties for lunch today. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Shout out to Nick. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. uh, and everybody that's involved in this guys, thank you so much. Um, not only, you know, on behalf of our entire 
community. And as you know, I sort of run the gamut north and south of the broad. So it's wonderful that you're able to serve so many people. And this was, Leah, frankly, such a great idea. Um, so yeah, thank, thank you, Leah. Yeah, thank you guys thank you because of our hearts and, and just being part of this community. And you're absolutely right. And I think this is a good note to end on. This is a special community. The Low Country is unique. It's very special. And you, you come here and you really, if you really get it, you really get it and you fall in love with it. And, and the people here are what make it so special. And being able to find ways to help each other in times when we need each other. Um, that's, that's what our, that's what this community, it's what community as a concept, right, is really all about. But in, in, in our little area, our little neck of the woods, I think that we really do a great job with that. And, and you two, both of you, thank you for being part of this and for everything that you do. This is a critical element for our hospitality workers uh, in here in Beaufort County. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please make sure to like and subscribe. And once again, share it out. We look forward to seeing you on the other side. Guys, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.